So I want to touch on retouching as a photographer and um, how important it is that you, how important that is you learn. You definitely have to learn and you have to figure out how to approach the various projects or the various portraits that you're, you're going to be retouching. And I'm going to speak from the standpoint of me being a photographer and what I've come to learn over the years. During the time that I was in school, um, learning photography and going to my retouching class, I realized that at that time that I, I didn't know anything. I was not being, I didn't, I didn't, I was, I, I didn't know the fundamentals of basic Photoshop, you know? So I can tell anybody that I get in contact with or that I speak with, it's like, I spent more of my time after I got out of school relearning everything in which I paid for. So, with, on that note, I tell anybody, if you want to learn photography, jump in. Jump in the water, the interwebs, the internet, whatever, books, they're full of great more information that you can handle. Anyhow, so I spent more time relearning everything in which I paid for to figure out what it is I want and how about how how could I best go about achieving those those things. And I started to look around, started to look around at images and anyone who was willing to give up the secrets as to how they were able to create the final product. I didn't, I personally felt that I had no problem creating the product, but finalizing the product for me was a bit of a problem, you know? And at the time, there was this retoucher out of Germany by the name of Calvin Hollywood. You know, his images were like, you know, it's like, whoa. Okay, they made a statement, you know. But even though I enjoyed the images and I enjoyed the fact that he was willing to put them out there, put the put the secrets of how he was creating, I took it and I applied a lot of the techniques to my my work at the time. Uh, not because that's what I initially really wanted. But I took it as a sense, uh, uh, in, in a way, a uh, course on figuring out what I did not want. So, if he did 10 on a particular filter, I did four. Because I found that four worked better for me personally. You know? If he, um, whatever he did, I did what he did, you know? And then I was like, I need to say, okay, I don't like that so much but here yeah, but how about me scaling it back scaled it back a little and because of me scaling it back you know and I was like oh, okay that worked for me that worked for me that worked for me anyway let's fast forward it to this present day and time and where I'm at is that I'm really really comfortable with what I am what I'm able to produce when it comes to personally retouching you know and the Calvin Hollywood way of doing things for me, I don't do it anymore or I don't, like I still use a lot of the techniques, the foundational things that I've learned over the years by watching him or from watching him. But I've also come to realize that I have my own aesthetics, my own, the things that I really, really love when it comes to the way an image is finalized, you know, so, and I, and I do those things, and I do those things with me to the best of my ability. But I guess this video that I'm making here today really has more to do with take your time, experiment, and fail. You have to take your time, experiment, and fail because if you don't take your time, experiment, and allowing yourself the ability to fail, you will never figure out what it is, your voice. You'll never
never figure out your your personal true voice. You know, I've taken ideas from many of her, many many retouchers, many photographers, but at the end of the day, I had to figure out how to make those ideas my own ideas. Because if I did not do that, I would just be repeating what somebody else did, and that's not good for the marketplace. That's not good for the business because I don't want when a client comes to me and say, hey, can you retouch like Calvin Hollywood? I want Calvin Hollywood stuff. And then my personal response would be, you need to go to Calvin Hollywood because I'm not Calvin Hollywood. My name is Romeo Duncan Clark. And the way I see the world and the way I do things is the way Romeo Duncan Clark sees and does and interacts with the world. You know, so for you young photographers out there, and you young photographers out there, and even you vets, you know, don't be afraid to fail, man. Hey, one thing I've come to learn is that failure is every fucking thing, man. You gotta fail, bro. You gotta fail before you succeed, you know. And you have to just, you have to be just willing to take that plunge, take that, uh, damn won't do that again <laughs> you know what I mean those type of situations and grow from those situations man allow yourself to grow you know so all you young photographers figure out look at the landscape look at books look at the magazine the interwebs whatever and see what's going on in terms of imagery and see what you like and gather every bit of information upon the things you like and you pull them into yourself you pull them in and when you start to retouch and when you start to do your creative process, you know, you allow those things to be your focus. Focus on, oh, I need my eyes to look this way. Oh, I, I want my skins to be this way. You know, you, you take it, you know. This is a creative fee. You get paid for your creativity, believe it or not. But you have to stand behind your creativity. You have to be willing to say, hey, you know, I appreciate you hiring me or wanting me to do whatever, whatever. But this is what I do here. This is why you're paying me. You're not paying me because you want Joe Grimes or you want um, Calvin Hollywood or you want Zach Aries. You, you're paying me because you like my final product. And I'm willing to give you my final product if you're willing to allow me to do what it is I do, you know? Anyhow, I, I think that's about it. But hey, man, this is Romeo Duncan Clark from Dunn Photo Studios. And um, tell me what you think. Leave your comments down below. 